My name is Tony Greenstein. I'm a long-standing veteran Jewish anti-Zionist, uh, and I'm very active in uh, Palestine solidarity work and uh, with the organisation Jewish Network for Palestine. What about your role uh, in the early days? I was one of the founders of uh, National Palestine Solidarity Campaign, although I've now resigned from them because they're no longer anti-Zionist. Can you just give us your take on what's been going on over the last 10 days since this, uh, well, I mean, an attack by Hamas into Israel itself? Yeah, well, the, the attack itself was a result of 17 years of siege, of bombing, of the killing of thousands of people, including children. Uh, and uh, if you like, the inmates of the world's largest open air prison broke out. Uh, and uh, we don't yet know exactly what did happen. Well, hang on. Uh, you can't really talk about it as a prison break, can you? Because these people were all very heavily armed. And what we've been well, they were. Reports, that's how they broke out. <laughs> well, they were getting reports of uh, you know, indiscriminate killing. Well, there are, but I mean, I mean, it may well be true there was some indiscriminate killings, but we also have, from I think it's Anna Porat, one of the one of those who were captured, uh, the Israelis uh, almost massacred their own in freeing the one or two people that they did free. We don't yet know the story of what happened, but accepting that there were many innocent people killed. The fact is that Gaza is an open air prison, no doubt about that, and the prisoners broke out. So it was a re you know, the breakout was a reaction to a 17 year scene. Now, the Israelis have always made a big thing, Netanyahu particularly, about being able to deal with terrorism. For example, this hostage crisis. They love the idea that the Israeli army can come in and release hostages that have been taken, but it doesn't seem as if it's going to be quite so easy this time. No, no, it's not. I mean, Bezal al Smotrich, who is a key member, he's a proud homophobe, his finance minister in Gala to West Bank, has basically said they should go in and not care too much about the hostages. Their, their diary, Hannibal do doctrine, basically says it's better to kill your own people than let them be taken captive or used as a hostage. Israel has thousands, 5,000 plus Palestinian prisoners. They are all hostages. They, they haven't had a fair trial. And who is Israel to try them? They're, Israel is the occupier. So yes, they took hostages in order to free their own hostages. So uh, I don't buy into this, oh, it's wicked to take hostages, but not if Israel does it. When, it, when a 12-year-old child is jailed indefinitely in the West Bank, because the age of criminal responsibility for Palestinian children is 12, but Jewish children it's 14. When you have that situation, then of course people will resort to violence to get them back. It, that's what Israel does. Israel has a reign of terror in the West Bank. At the moment, 60 people have been killed there in the last week. The conditions are absolutely horrifying. Terror, sets of pogroms against Palestinians take place every single day. But no one speaks about that. And yet we have the war criminal leaders of the West offering Israel further weapons in order to wreak mass destruction in Gaza. Yeah, the big atrocity of the week is at the Al-Ali Hospital, 500 yeah. killed in one blast. Absolutely. The, Israelis, the Israelis are saying that actually that was a Hamas misfire. Yes, of course, Israel is, because it doesn't want to own up to responsibility. In fact, it has already, already killed four medical personnel there a couple of days before. It had told the hospital to evacuate three times. There's no doubt whatsoever Israel did that. No, no, nothing that Hamas possesses in the way of weaponry could kill 500 people anyway. And if you look at the video, and the Israelis have been doctoring these things like mad, you can see the whoosh of a supersonic missile hitting that. It wasn't a missile that fell from the sky at a, 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 you know, a, a, a almost no velocity. That was a targeted attack. And, and initially, it, Haninia Naftali, who is Ben, Gur, ben who is Netanyahu's aide, claimed responsibility and said, we've wiped out a terrorist cell that was operating in the hospital. It was only when they realized the counter-reaction, he changed his tune. He, 
the 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 the, cat, the screen print of his tweet is there for all to see here, uh, including on my blog. There is absolutely no doubt that was uh, caused by Israel. Of course, Israel lies about it. It lies about everything. It denied it killed uh, Shireen Abla uh, Akhla, the Al Jazeera journalist, last year, when everyone can see that it was a targeted killing. Israel, of course, won't accept responsibility, uh, but and of course, the West will go along with its lies. But there's absolutely no doubt in the minds of everyone in Gaza and in the Arab world, and anyone who has a couple of brain cells to put together, that was an Israeli attack. I wouldn't even say it went wrong. It was a targeted attack. I mean, what can be the point of such a... I mean, that's obviously going to bring an enormous amount of uh, negative publicity to the Israeli cause, isn't it? Well, you would think rationally that was so, but what was the reason? What was the reason for the massacres in the Nakba in 1948 to stimulate an exodus? Israel wants to clear northern Gaza. Hospitals are an obstacle. What do you do? You bomb them. It's as simple as that, because Israel's already bombed nine medical facilities in Gaza. It's got no uh, scruples about attacking hospitals. I mean, I, you're by... I mean, what you're describing, Tony, is almost like a kind of, uh, at the bottom of it all, a kind of land grab, basically. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. It wants to went to Gaza of the, of the Palestinians. I mean, Israel wants to went to the West Bank of the Palestinians eventually. Yes, Zionism is an expansion of the archaeology and movement. It started off on that basis. And yes, it wants to uh, empty it. And it doesn't really care how many people it kills in the process. They, they talk about the Holocaust, but is, the only lesson Israel's learned from the Holocaust is that we should commit the atrocities and not the non-Jews. There's, there's no other uh, rationale uh, behind it. Uh, what do you make of uh, Biden and Sunak's visit this week? I think they're absolutely outrageous. Israel is perpetrating genocide in Gaza, and they've come to give them full support and promise them weapons to do it with. It's a, you know, I mean, it, you could, it beggars belief. These are war criminals. It, you know, 1947, they hanged 10 Nazis for war criminals. There should be a Nuremberg trial for Biden, for Sunak, and all the others who are aiding and equipping Israel to commit the crimes that it is. It, it is really disgusting. But then let's face it, the whole Julian Assange in prison, because he revealed their war crimes in Iraq. So there's no morality when it comes to Western Well, I mean, the British uh, forces are out there. The Navy is now chugging around there in the Eastern Mediterranean. I yes. mean, you would think that uh, with this all this various equipment, they might be able to try and enforce a no-fly zone or even drop in some clean water and medical supplies into Gaza. But no, apparently they're there to support the Israelis. So what do you make of the British naval presence there and the Americans? Well, the, the British, of course, are just need to puppets of the United States. Britain doesn't have an independent foreign policy. Uh, it, 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 it's hot. The whole basis of, his, of Britain's foreign policy is to follow America in lockstep, and that's what they're doing. But it, it is outrageous. I think the purpose of the naval presence is actually to, to deter Hezbollah as much as anything else in Iran. Uh, but you're absolutely right. They can enforce no fly zone. But what happens instead? The United States vetoes a ceasefire resolution at the UN Security Council. Israel, uh, the United States, is complicit in the crimes of Israel in Gaza, and by default, uh, Sunak has made Britain uh, uh, an accomplice to that. There's no morality uh, when it comes to West. What about the Rafa crossing? This is a, all eyes are on that at the moment. This is a potential way of getting aid in, uh, but the Egyptians don't want to open it. No, no, I, I agree. I mean, it, it, the Egyptian regime is one of the most repressive in the world. It's at the beck and call of the Israeli state. It's the second largest recipient of USA after Israel itself. It's a regime which is at odds and fighting its own people. I, I expect nothing of Sisi. He is just a Western puppet. He is, I mean, the Egyptian military is so corrupt, it's not true. But, you know, he, you know it has torture chambers. I mean, it's a horrific regime. Uh, and yes, it, it acts as Israel tells it. It has an alliance with Israel. Uh, but of course it could let it through. Without a doubt, uh, it, it, it's a criminal regime. I mean, in a sense, 
the way to actually overthrow uh, Zionism is to overthrow the Arab regimes who are complicit with Zionism and Israel. Uh, that's why Israel's there, to protect them. The Jordanians, for example, very outspoken at the UN, and the Russians actually bringing that resolution you talked about. But yes. what about the IDF? They are poised and have been for the last 10 days, uh, sitting well, there uh, nearly two weeks, sitting there threatening to go into Gaza, but they won't. So what's going on? What do you think is going to happen there? Well, the problem for Israel is it has an army which is very good at killing innocent women, children and men unarmed in the West Bank. But it's absolutely useless at fighting. You can see that when they broke out on the August 7th, they went through the military installations like surrounding it like a nice blue butter. Israel's troops are not capable of withstanding a determined counter-offensive. That's why they don't want a war with Hezbollah, because they know they would come off second best. That's why they're bombed from the air. It's a coward's way out. I suppose it's a, it's a very fundamental, basic question, but, you know, we've got what we've got is we've got soldiers fighting civilians, it seems, and, and this sets yes, a really dangerous yes. precedent, doesn't it? Absolutely, yes. It's a war against the Palestinian civilians. Uh, I mean, it, it is totally outrageous, and it shows there's not even a moral fig leaf for the West foreign policy. That's what it comes down to. Of, you know, all of the talk of peace and so on. When it comes down to it, they will they will apologise and excuse anything that Israel does, including blowing up hospitals. Uh, if you look at, I mean, read the Jonathan Cook and other articles. There is no doubt Israel's put out fake videos, a fake transcript of a, a conversation between two Hamas officers that was clearly their own people. They've got the accents wrong, they've got the dialect wrong, they've got everything wrong. But that's what Israel does. And of course, if you accept it, uh, like uh, Biden did over Shireen, the, the murder of the Al Jazeera journalist, you'll accept anything because, you know, they may be absolutes, but they're absolutes, you know. What about the Labour Party? Starmer today has said, first of all, the hostages must be released and then uh, then we can have some uh, supplies, medical and, and water and food go into Gaza. Starmer is, by his own definition, a Zionist without qualification. It, there is no difference between him and Sunak. No, the hostages mustn't be released first. What must be stopped first is the Israeli bombing. Secondly, there must be a prisoner exchange. Palestinian prisoners in Israeli jails who don't get parole, who are kept there as hostages, they must be released. There's no difference between the Palestinian hostages and the Israeli hostages, except the Palestinians treat them much better. Um, there have been comparisons between concentration camps and Gaza and the West yes. Bank, Tony. I mean, is yes. that fair, do you think, as a Jew yourself? Would you would you compare it to these Nazi concentration camps 80 years ago? Yes, Gaza is a concentration camp. I mean, uh, concentration camps weren't invented by the Nazis, incidentally, but by the British. There's nothing anti-Semitic about it. But if the comparison is that, then make it. We should make comparisons with the Nazi period because that's how we prevent it re -ha happening again. If you say you can't comment about it or compare it, unless Israel does. I mean, Israel said it, and again, it's a lie. Uh, there are all those who say this is the biggest death of uh, Jews since the Holocaust. I mean, of course, it actually isn't. But, you know, they can compare, but we can't. Yes, what they're doing to Gaza bears resemblance to uh, the concentration camps and the Nazi setup deprivation of food and water. Even the Nazis actually didn't do that. They didn't cut off food and water to the, to the Warsaw Ghetto entirely. You're the son of a rabbi. You're not religious, yes. but uh, I mean, they seem to have turned the Holy Land into hell. Yes, uh, they've drawn all the wrong lessons and taken all the wrong lessons from the Bible. The Bible says in about 12 places, welcome the stranger into your land. Israel doesn't do that. It turns them away. They've drawn on the book of Joshua, not on the book of prophets. And that's the problem with Zionism. Your uh, website, Tony? My website is www.azvsas.blogspot.com or alternatively just tonygreenstein.com. OK, Tony Greenstein, thanks very much for joining us. OK, take care. Bye.